Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Joseph. I posted a behind the scenes video on how I got these series of images. So if you haven't seen that, then you can click on the link in my description box, check out the video, see how I shot it. Even though today's video is more about how I experimented and came up with this final image. So this is going to be an overview. We're not going to go into um, retouching it live for you guys to see how it happened. I'm just going to go through the layers, show you what I did. And the reason is when I was editing this image, I didn't really know which direction it was going to go. I just, you know, just started with the basic things that I'll do. So my healing, um, frequency separation, dodge and burn. And then when it came to finalizing the image or um, giving it that unique look, I thought I should take it a step further. So I wanted it to have like a bit of a painterly feel. So the end result is what moved it to that direction. I'm going to show you um, everything that I did, but I just want you to know that this is not going to be like a very detailed um, retouching video. We're just going to be walking through the layers and then seeing exactly what I did. So I'm going to show you how we move the image from looking like this. So this is basically the raw import, even though I did make some adjustments in camera raw. And the reason I did that is because um, Adobe still does not have the camera profiles for the R5. And I just wanted to pull as much um, contrast and details and or color depth from the raw file as much as I could. So that was all I did using camera raw. All right. And then we're going to move it to looking like this. Actually, this even has like two endings, right? You can choose to add those textures that I added, or you can choose to just add the vignette and the glow and you're still good to go. So there's really no wrong or right way to go about this. This was just something that I was experimenting with and I kind of like the results. All right. So starting off, I'm going to hide all of these layers and then we're going to go through them one by one. So layer zero obviously is what I imported into Photoshop where we are now going to prepare the image um, do our healing, remove blemishes and stuff like that. So the first thing I did was to remove um, the tiny blemishes that she has on her face. So when I turn on that healing layer, you'd see that all the blemishes are gone. There's really nothing standing out at this point, right? So here's before, after just removing petty lines and scratches and marks, things that are not really permanent on either the outfit or the model. So you can see I did remove a lot of those um, just using the healing brush to do that. All right. So after I went through the entire image, I just matched everything and decided to liquefy. So what I wanted to do was just basically smoothing out this area. So me creating this whole liquefy was just because I wanted to smoothing out this area a little bit. So you can see I just added a bit more shape to it. All right. Now, afterwards, I now just run my frequency separation action. So in case you don't have my workflow actions, I'm going to put it in the link down below. You can check it out, purchase it. It makes you work faster and also helps you create consistent results time and time again. All right. So check it out through my digital store. And if you purchase it, you are supporting the channel. All right. So after I did that, the next thing I also did was to run my dodge and bend complete um, action. It's also found in my actions. So if you have that, you're going to have all of those actions in there. So if I zoom into her face, you'd see that we have smoothened um, quite a bit, just adding more shape and depth, basically just continuing where the frequency separation left off. So if I hide a dodge and burn, for example, and I just do it before and after of the frequency separation, you can see that it's not really, really, um, strong we're not really changing so much you can see it's just smoothing out any tonal variations right but i didn't let it overpower um, the image i didn't really change the way she looks and over here you can see that when i added the dodge and bend we're just adding shape and depth to the image right so afterwards i felt this logo right here was a bit distracting so i just you know took that out with a simple patch tool and that was it all right so from there, now I began to, you know, fine tune the image and give it like a general direction as to where to go. So the first thing I did was to, you know, add something that I call background characteristics, right? So if I open that, you'd see that, let me hide all of these for now. So you'd see that I have this texture, right? So currently it's at 55 on opacity and it's set to soft light, all right? So let me just take it to normal 
and then increase the opacity to 100. Also, I'm gonna block out the layer mask so you guys can see um, the way it looks. So if I hide this and even hide this as well, this is the way that it looks. It is just a simple um, image that I downloaded of this Baroque style painting, <laughs> you know, just to create those textures in the background, right? So after I did that, um, I just wanted to add like a glow right behind here so that you can see the textures all around. And so what I did was I added some contrast. You can see over here, this is how flat it looks, but I added the contrast and also only made that contrast visible around the edges. So the middle part is not gonna be affected. As you can see right now, every part of the backdrop um, looks the same, but adding this glow in the back just, you know, adds more depth to it. So when I finished, I put that in a group and that is because I wanted to paint or feather it down into the existing backdrop. I didn't want it to have that straight line. So I just used my brush, painted on that layer mask and it gave me um, that smoothing effect. Afterwards, I created another curves and everything that I'm doing right now is only affecting the backdrop. It's not affecting my subject, right? So you'd notice that if I hide it, for example, she stays the same. The only thing that is being affected or that is changing is the backdrop. And it's because of the layer mask that I created in the beginning so that everything that I'm doing and clipping to the backdrop is only going to be affecting the backdrop and not hair, right? So this is everything that I did with the um, background characteristics. And afterwards I created a backdrop glow. So if I turn that on, it's just a simple white brush. Um, you can use a brush to do that or you can use your gradient to do that. So what I did was use my foreground to transparent and my foreground was set to white. So for example, if I create a new layer and then simply drag it out, you see that I have created a glow right in the middle, but because there is no layer mask attached to it, it is affecting my subject. So what I did was I simply went back into my background characteristics, pressed Alt, clicked and dragged the layer mask onto that glow. And you can see that because that initial selection has been done, it just moved the glow to the backdrop. So these are quick ways that you can, you know, work inside Photoshop. So you don't have to now mask out your subject again. If you already mask it once and then you're creating other layers that need that mask, you can simply alt click and drag onto the layer that requires that layer mask, all right? So I'm gonna delete this because we don't need it. I've already done it right here. And I'm gonna turn on the layer mask. So from here, what I now wanted to do is just work with the coloring so I can unify everything and then bring it back to place. But remember the backdrop was not set to normal and opacity was not 100%. So I'm gonna change that back to soft light and this is just gonna help it blend or interact with the backdrop a lot more and also reduce the opacity to about 55% because I think that is where we were. So you can see that now it's blending with the backdrop. It's not really something that you immediately see, but then it's adding more depth, more character, and then more information to the overall image, right? So now from here, what I'm gonna do is just desaturate the skin a little bit. Because our backdrop is gray, I just wanted to desaturate some of the colors in his skin tone and you know just move it so it blends a little bit well with our backdrop. Again, I was going for a painterly look, so I just wanted everything to have a little bit of a monochromatic feel and I just wanted to bronze everything up. I'm also working on a new um, LUT. I don't know if I'm gonna make it a LUT or a preset, but I will figure that out and it's just called bronze it. So it's something I'm experimenting with currently. It will just bronze everything in your image. Like just move all the different hues to that uniform bronze view. So if it's a look that you're going for, you can always just um, click it and it's gonna apply it onto your images. It works beautifully with dark skin tones. All right, but I mean, you can experiment with it when you get it, but I'm still experimenting, I'm still working on it. So stay tuned for the bronze it um, lot or preset. I don't know how I'm gonna, you know, finalize it. Then it came into coloring because again, I was experimenting. I didn't want to use um, the coloring presets or the coloring layers that my actions will create for you. So I just created all of them individually or independently so that I can tweak them and also let them interact with each other and just give me that unique look that I was looking for. So this is the final coloring. You can see it's 
giving it a more painterly look and we're just going to open that and then see what's in there so the first thing in here is my color balance and what this does is just shift some of the hues a little bit and i also reduce opacity to about 55 percent so if i double click on that you see in the midtones i went towards cyan a little bit then i went towards magenta and then i also added a ton of yellow and the highlights i added a little of red added magenta and then still added more yellow into the highlights and when we go into the shadows you'd see that i also added some cyan added a bit of green and then also added just a tiny bit of yellow so using the color balance this is what it gave me all right now another thing i also wanted to do just to help sell it if i zoom into the image for example you'd see that she doesn't really belong to the backdrop right you can see that she looks sharp she looks smooth the background also the same but if this was an actual painting there is going to be some texture some grain because you're painting either on a canvas or whatever material it is you're still going to have those effects showing through so i decided at this point to run my film grain action and this is just going to add some textures or grain to the image and you can see already it takes that digital feel of the image and then just gives it you know like a soft painterly vibe you don't have to do it but i just wanted to add that feel to the image and so i decided to do it i also brought the opacity down to about 45 percent because if i drag it to 100 it's a very strong effect i mean this could be a vibe that you're going for it's not bad i just wanted to you know have a balance of that digital effect that the camera created and also have the green in there just to create a very unique look so i'm just going to bring it down to about 50 percent all right so from here i now added one of my lats so i think i added the flowzilla lats so again if you don't have my melanin skin tone lats you can always go down into the description box and purchase it you support the channel but then again it also is a shortcut to help you create consistent accurate results every single time all right so after I did that, because the Flozilla LUT is a very strong LUT, even though I brought the opacity down to about 49%, because then again, if I take it to 100%, you can see that it's a very strong LUT. I like the way it handles the skin. It just makes that melanin really, really pop. But then again, it's also hiding all of the information on the backdrop. And I wanted to have a balance of both. I wanted to have that melanin skin tone pop, but then I also wanted to see some of the information on the backdrop. So I reduce the opacity to about 50%. So this just balances it out a tiny bit. So if I do it before and after, you can see that it is giving us that glow in her skin, but then we can still see some of the information in the backdrop. But I didn't end there. I created a levels adjustment right after that, and that just helped me open up the exposure a little bit. So what I did was just drag in the highlights a little bit. So this is without that drag that I did. You can see that it's really not that strong, but then without it, the image looks a little bit dull. So this is just helping to make it pop a little bit. All right, so the next thing I did was to create a gradient map. And inside the gradient map, I went into my um, photographic toning. So I actually have a dedicated video on how you can use these photographic toning um, gradient maps in your images right and you can't find it in the newer versions of photoshop so i showed you how you can make all of those visible so inside i went into legacy gradients then i came down into photographic toning and then i selected this particular one and then just changed the opacity a little bit um, to about 16 percent because if it's all the way to 100 this is the way it looks it's it's not really really bad but it's taking away from all of the work that we did before and that is why i reduced the opacity to i think about 19 or so percent right or let me just undo undo yeah it was 16 <laughs> percent so turning that on this is how it looks with the photographic tuning and you can see it's just helping everything look more uniform Afterwards, I just created a new curves adjustment and this just darkened the edges and I painted out the bottom part because I wanted, you know, some of that um, darkening not to be present in that area. All right. So this is it. You can see that it looks dark. You can't see the information in the fabric down there. And that is why I painted in there so we can have a little bit more of that being visible in the image. So this combined with everything else that I did helped move the image from looking like this 
which is pretty decent to looking like this. Now I said there are two endings to this image painting that we did and that is if I go back into my background characteristics, I can decide to hide the textures that I added. So this is still a stunning beautiful portrait on its own but this also just adds a new dynamic to the image. It helps give it like a new story or something of that nature. So Either way, you're not wrong. You can still go ahead and then keep it this way. This I feel is also unique in its own way, but adding this just gives it, you know, extra depth and character. So yeah, that is it for today's walkthrough. I hope you learned something out of it. I'm going to be doing several other retouching videos um, coming up. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then I recommend that you do because I have a lot more content coming. I appreciate you watching this one. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in the next video. And remember, don't ever give up.